Hi guys, it's Vana Pfeiffer, the Twisted Stitcher, and today I'm going to share with you how to finish a stuffed pillow with handmade piping and some decorative fabrics on the side. This design is by Country Cottage Needleworks. Nikki Lehman is the designer. Um, this is her new series called Monthly Sampler Series. I stitched it exactly as called for on the pattern, except I changed the pink colors. I deepened them a little bit on the palette. I chose to, ch to stitch them in Classic Color Works Wild Berries and Rose Petal. So Wild Berries and Rose Petal are the only colors that I switched out just to deepen the palette a little bit. Now then, I'm not completely happy with the fabrics that I have chosen. <laughs> Um, out of the, I have a metric ton of fabric in my cave here, and I'm not 100% happy with what I've chosen, but or what I have on hand, but there is a blizzard outside, and so I am just stuck with what I have here. So the first fabric I'm going to do is I'm going to do this white, and I'm putting it just along the side here. And I'm going to use Lady Dots Country Rust Rick Rack. And I think I'm going to put it closest, just between the, the stitching and the white, just to kind of break up the starkness of the white. And then our rest of our pillow will be in this sweet on point gingham. I only have fat quarters of both of these fabrics, of course, and that will be more than enough to finish them. I just can't make any mistakes. The piping will be made out of the white, so it's going to be, I think, I always kind of evolve as I'm finishing, but I believe that I'm going to do the rickrack first, and then a small strip of white, and then the gingham and the piping I am going to make out of the white. Okay, so that kind of shows you a roadmap of where I'm going. I always kind of like to do that before I start finishing so that I know where I'm going. All right, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this piece out. I am going to have an inch remaining on all sides. This is the tag that I always stitch to put on the back of my um, stitch pieces, and I will show you how I do that once I get this cut out. So let's go ahead and cut it this way, and I have to be careful because I don't want to cut <laughs> into my tag. Um, so let me see how I want to do it. I'm going to cut the bottom first. Like I said, inch margins. And I'm just lining up my ruler with the bottom of the stitching on that one inch line. And then I'm going to cut it. And I went about an inch over so I don't cut into the rest of my good fabric. I'm going to line up this bottom, this bottom since I know that that's a straight cut. And I'm going to go on up but before I go on up, I have to make sure that I have my inch margin on this side. And that we're square everywhere. So I'm lining up my inch all along the edge of that stitching and then I will cut that so then I can get rid of this big piece of fabric and save it for the next ones and then I go ahead and I don't know what the best thing is to do here I'm going to line up down here at the bottom again Save that, I'm gonna put that away, save it for later. 
and then go ahead lining up on this side and across the top and cut it all right so here we have our piece I kind of always like to then recheck everything to make sure that I'm good I probably can add can even up this one spot here maybe a little bit okay that's good and that's good okay so one little bit off just one string off that's not bad okay so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to get our lady dots rick rack out And I just want to play before I start sewing anything at all to see how this looks. We need the dark because the gingham kind of picks up the light, but I don't have a dark accent and I try to always pick up the accents on a piece and I felt like this Country Rust Lady Dots Rick Rack really did pick up the darks in the wild berries. I think I almost like this on top of the white better than on a, on the um, linen, so I'm gonna change. <laughs> and it's my prerogative, since I'm the creator of this pillow, that I can do that. I'm gonna set this to the side and I'm gonna go ahead and cut off. Um, a two inch strip. So I'm just lining up my two inch line and I'm gonna cut. All right, so this is going to be my strip along the side of my pillow. And I'm going to just kind of trim it. I want it a little bit bigger because I always kind of like to play with it in case I make a mistake or something. Cut it a little bit bigger than what the size of your linen is. And now I'm going to iron it in half. my handy dandy iron. It is a steam fast and I got it at my quilt shop. They are available on Amazon. Okay, so I'm gonna fold it in half. And this is a wool mat that I'm ironing on. I want, uh, make sure you get, if you get a wool mat, make sure you have like a half an inch to one inch on the side makes it very much better in my opinion. That's my opinion only. So I'm folding it in half and I'm gonna iron it. And I wanna iron it well. I'm gonna get some water for my iron, just a moment. This is just wire, iron, uh, water in a, in a squeeze bottle. It just makes it um, easier to fill these irons, so I just put it in a squeeze bottle. Okay, so we are steaming here. I just want the edge of this crease very crisp okay all right so we've got that ironed 
and <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and cut a length of my rickrack here. And then we will iron our rickrack. Okay, so we have our white piece now. I'm going to iron my rickrack just to get the wrinkles out of it. Okay, all right, so when we sew, we're gonna sew this down, about like that. Then we're going to put this, and that kind of breaks up the starkness of the white. And then we will have this as our side. Isn't that cute? Okay, so. I'm going to set this to the side and I'm going to cut a four inch piece off the edge of this piece of fabric. So I'm going to line up my one, two, three, four along the edge and the side. Okay. And I want to cut this to size. So just like this, I can save this. And now I'm going to iron over about a half an inch on this fabric. So then I'm going to check to make sure that all my, it's straight here and all my points are kind of the same. So that they are, you know, cohesive. See, they're kind of all cohesive there on the edge, so it's not like glaringly crooked or anything. Okay, so when we go to sew, we're going to top stitch this one. Then we're going to top stitch this on and then we will finally put this on and top stitch the whole thing okay i'm going to go over to my sewing machine and show you how this will work okay so here we are at the sewing machine i've got my piece here i've got white thread because i want it very clean very crisp so i've got my white thread in i've got my white piece I want it just like a fourth of an inch from the edge of the stitching. So I find a thread in the even weave or linen or Ada, whatever you are stitching on. And I follow that line with my white piece, okay? Now then, it doesn't matter what your seam allowance is, so I'm just gonna follow the edge of this, top, of this bottom one. It doesn't matter what the seam allowance is. I'm just going to follow the edge of the side of my foot and this thread in my even weave all the way down so that it's straight and about a quarter of an inch away from the stitching. Okay, so I'm going to sink my needle. I'm going to make sure that I have my speed governor on slow 
and I'm gonna start stitching all the way down. There's no reason to go fast. It takes a long time to cross stitch a piece, even if it's small, go slow. That will give you good returns every time. Now you could also pin this if you wanted to, to follow that line, that would make sure that you it always stays in place okay needle up and there's our first there's our first piece okay next okay so now the next step is that I'm going to cover that line that I just that that stitched line all the way down the white piece with my Rick rack, okay? Now then, I'm gonna make this all one step because I don't want like a thousand seams. So I'm going to cover that line that I just sewed with the Rick rack and I just want the waves of the Rick rack to show. So I am only or I'm making sure that the this fabric is just at the bottom of those waves all the way down. I just want the top edge of that rick rack to show. Okay. You can pin this however you want to do it, but I'm not gonna pin it. And um because I because I have a lot of experience doing this, I'm not gonna pin it. But if you are just beginning sewing, definitely pin it. And you just wanna pin through the rickrack and um, the fabric all the way down. Okay, I'm gonna do a quarter of an inch allowance, which a quarter of an inch on my foot is on, on this side because I want it to lay, I want it to catch the rickrack and the fabric. I'm gonna, no, I, I take that back. I'm gonna do an eighth of an inch allowance and it's just right there along the plastic part on my foot. I want it to catch the rickrack and the fabric. I'm gonna make sure that I hold this all the way down and I'm gonna start and I'm going slow because I want to make a straight seam all the way down. Okay, needle up, and there is our first bit of our, of our sewing. I've got a straight seam. I've got my fabric all just hitting the bottom edge of the rickrack. Great, so I'm gonna go back over to the side here, and I'm gonna show you how to make piping. All right, here we are back at the table after sewing our pillow. And now we can cut down our pillow, even up edges, cut out, figure what we want. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just even up all the edges.
Now then, now that that's even, now we have some decisions to make. I'm going to cut the top and the bottoms down to three quarters of an inch and the side. So this top, this side, and this bottom, we're going to do three quarters of an inch from the edge of the stitching. Right, so now that we've got those clean, the edges cleaned up there, now we need to cut this side down to, from the um, edge of the fabric, I'm going to cut it down to three inches. All right, so there we go. There we have it. All right, here we are back at the the sewing desk and I have a 12 inch square of my white fabric and I want to make bias I want to cut on the bias so I'm going to cut two uh, two and a half inches bias strips and why I'm going to cut on the bias is because that allows the fabric to stretch and move in curves and in corners and since we're sewing a pillow we have four corners to to put this piping around so I'm gonna cut corner to corner like that and then I'm going to do two and a half inch strips on following the corner that you cut or the edge that you cut I'm gonna do two and a half inch strips that's only going to allow us, since this is a small square, it's only going to allow us two cuts each, each um, triangle, but that's more than enough for the area that we have to cover on our small pillow. Okay, so I'm going to save this, but these two will be bias cuts that we will get, bind together. Then I'm going to take my other side and do the same thing. I'm going to cut two and a half inch strips for my piping. How do you sew piping? You sew piping by joining these strips, edge to edge, right sides together. So, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna sew here. And then when I sew here, I'm gonna put it, you know, when I put it over like that, it'll be all one long strip. So let's go back to the sewing machine and we will sew our bias strips together. All right, we're ready to sew our bias strips together. So pretty sides together always, and we're gonna cross them and follow exactly where we cut. And we're gonna leave just a little bit of a of, of the points off the edge, okay? Okay, so that's how it looks when it's sewn together. Okay, so the next time that we sew together our bias tape, we don't have a pretty sides together that'll match that angle because of the way we cut it. So what you do is you just cross it and leave a little bit, just like we use the tips, you just want a little bit of a tip right here and you sew it from edge to edge again and you're gonna go right between where they, where they come together. So you wanna put it right between where they come together and then you wanna come out right between the legs where they cross.
I'm making more bias tape than what we need. Okay, one more time, we'll cut all this over at the, the table. One more. Pretty sides together. We have to come off the edge just a little bit. Like that. And we're gonna go between this space to this space. So there is our bias tape. We'll go back to the table and we'll cut it up and iron it. All right, here we are back at the table and we're just going to cut these wings off our bias binding. this one same way doesn't matter just you know you want generous enough that we can iron it okay now then we will iron these open Okay, so I do it from the back side and then I do it from the front side as well. All right, now we're gonna cut these little, these little guys off. Okay, so I've already interfaced, put interfacing on the back of my pillows. I use PF44, or Pellon 44, which is a very lightweight interfacing. It's, a, it's just a very lightweight interfacing. And that's what I use, it's an iron-on, and it is, you just iron it on and it's ready to, to sew it on. Okay, so I've got my front of my pillow. I take cording. This is a quarter inch cording for this. Since it's a small pillow, I'm using a small cording. I just generally lay my cording around the outside of my pillow because then I and add about four inches. I, why do I add four inches? I add four inches so that I have some play with where I'm going to join the piping together, okay? So then I know that this is how much cording I need for my piping, and this is my bias strips, which are my, what I'm gonna cover my piping, what I'm gonna make my piping with. I wanna make sure that I have enough, and I do. I've got a, I mean, it's gonna be a little close, I think, but I have more than enough. So what I'm going to do is now I'm gonna go over and I'm going to sew my piping together. I have a lot of fabric, but we will trim that off once we begin to construct our, our pillow, okay? You always rather have more than not enough. Okay, so I'm gonna go back, to, we're gonna go back to the sewing machine and we're gonna make our pipe. Okay, we're back here at the machine and I'm going to take off my regular presser foot and I'm going to put on a piping foot. A piping foot will just have these little grooves that you run your pipe, your cording through, your piping through, okay? So I'm putting on my piping foot. All 
All right. I've got my piping and I've got my cording. I'm going to fold this over so that I have a, a clean edge and I'm gonna finger press it. And I'm going to sew the material onto the piping. All it is, oh wait, you gotta make sure that your piping's on the right side. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to fold, here's my piping, I'm going to fold it over, okay? And I'm just going to finger press it to make a clean edge, okay? Now I'm going to, this is unraveled, so I, I'll cut this off when I'm joining. And I'm just going to fold it over and match the sides, pretty sides out. You want your pretty side, you know, this is going to be the piping. So pretty side out and you just sew it on. Okay, so I've got my cording underneath my piping foot, my piping underneath my piping foot. The cording is following in this groove of the piping foot. My piping foot is down. I'm going to drop my needle and I'm going to just sew the material onto the cording. All right, so we've got our piping made. Now we're gonna go back and we're gonna get this onto the front, pin it onto the front so we can sew it on. All right. Here we are back one. at the work table. And the first thing that we're going to do is I want to trim off some of this extra. Now, some of you may be saying, why did you put so much, use so much a two and a half inch material? I did that so that as learners, you need more rather than less because you're doing new techniques. As you get more adept, you can use less um, fabric for your bias binding, but I think that when you're first starting sewing or doing a, something new that you need to be generous with what your allotment of fabric is because you can always cut off what you don't need. Regardless, you probably still would have needed at least like a one and a half to two inch cut of bias tape. So I'm gonna do a half an inch from the edge of my seam. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we are going to pin our bias tape all around our pillow and then go sew it, okay? So, you are you got to think about how it's going to be when it's finished and so you would think that oh i'm going to sew it on the outside no because then you would have you you put your court your piping on the outside then this would be what shows when you get done sewing it so i try to what i try to do is i try to do a quarter of an inch away from the sewing the stitching like i did on when I went up in here, when I went on my side fabric. So about a quarter of an inch. You don't have to get like crazy about that, but that's, you know, about a quarter of an inch. Nothing's perfect. We can do the best we can, but nothing's perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna trim off my, and we wanna start in the middle because we're gonna join the piping down here. So again, about a quarter of an inch away from your stitching. And you wanna put a pin every so often to hold it in place.
Okay, and then when we get to the corner, what we're gonna do is we're going to pinch that, and then we're going to clip our corners. This allows the fabric to, to be more uh, giving as it, see how easily it turns on the corner then? So you want it to turn on the corner, pinch it together so that you have a square edge. I'm gonna clip a little bit more right here. Trying to maintain as much as best you can a quarter of an inch away from your stitching. I've got it pinned all the way around and we're back here ready to meet. Now then, a couple of words. Clip your corners and when you're coming down the side, if you have a very um, geometric pattern, pick something and follow it down so that it's straight. If it's not straight, it will look wonky and you'll stare at that. Your eye will be drawn to whatever flaw. <laughs> that there is. So I followed, as you can see, the, the edge of these diamonds all the way down. Okay, now then, we're back here to the end. I want to cut back here. Okay, a couple inches. Now then, I'm going to get a seam ripper or a little snip, and I'm going to take these stitches out. Now I want to clip where my cording's gonna meet the other cording and I wanna go just a hair over 
So right there. So there it is, just a hair over. Okay, so what is this? We're back here. We've got it. We're going to fold it over, but we need about an inch more. So what we're going to do is we're going to fold this over and we're going to finger press it, okay? And really, we can probably fold it over. We want to see where we're going to do here because that's where we're going to join. So just fold it over to the edge of that cording. Unpin this. Get these snug together. Finger press this down. And right there's our join. Okay, so you have a clean edge here, and this is all seamless here. And we're just going to pin this down. Okay, now we're going to go back to the sewing machine and we're going to sew this down, okay? Just a minute. Okay, here we are at the sewing machine. Let me reiterate. We have interfacing on the back. I use PF44. We have our piping with our clipped corners going all the way around and we have joined it down here. Joined it down here, okay? If you see any stray threads, get those off. Okay, now then, we're going to just sew, and I'm going to start down here at the edge first. At the bottom, sorry, at the bottom edge. Let me get my threads pulled. Lift my needle, and I'm just going to sew it on the way I sewed the piping on. All right, so we got our piping sewn on, and I apologize if you couldn't see. I have a lot going on with this, <laughs> but it's just sewing it on, just sewing it on. Wherever we pinned it, you're just going to put your foot channel right in the piping, along the piping, and just go all the way around, okay? Now we're going to add our backing, all right? So... We've got a lot of thickness down here. We've got a lot of thickness down here. So I'm not going to put where I where I stuffed the, the pat pillow down there. I'm going to do it along this side where we don't have rickrack and we just have normal thickness, a couple of thicknesses of fabric, okay? So let me get my backing. Okay. <clears throat> We've got our piping sewn on. Now we're going to put our backing on and I don't pin mine. I just lay it down <clears throat> and start sewing. Now then, 
we are not going to put the where we stuff our pillow at the top or the bottom like I said because of of thicknesses we got a lot going on here we got a lot going on up here so I'm going to leave a little space right here on the side for stuffing so I am just going to lay my pretty sides together and start sewing now then when I sew I am feeling for this cording and I'm trying to get this I'm sorry I'm feeling for this piping and I'm going to get my seam right along this edge so I'm going to go ahead and sew from the top here down okay I'm feeling for the piping I'm going to stop because this is in the middle of my pillow. I'm going to reverse to reinforce that. Stop. And I'm going to leave a space. A two or three inch space is all you need. And then I'm going to start again. I'm going to stop, go in reverse to reinforce it, and then go all the way, all the way back around to where we first started. and stop all right there my friends we have sewn our pillow now we're gonna go back to the table and we're gonna finish right, this here up we are back at the table we've got it all sewn in I am going to cut this extra fabric off I'm going to just kind of debulk these corners. All right now, I'm going to kind of finger press this opening so that I know where I can sew it back together when I hand sew it, and I'm going to turn it out. So go from the furthest corner, grab it, and just start working it out. All right, there we are. Now then, I want to press from the back side because this will be our last press. Okay, press, now we're gonna stuff it.
Okay, so we're fully stuffed. Now we're gonna sew our opening together. And how I like to do that is I wanna, um, I have my edge here and I, I wanna push it together. And I'm going to just use a pin to hold it. You can use those little clip things too. I just use pins. All right, and now I'm going to get some thread, load up some thread. Make my quilters knot, make a plus sign, wrap it a couple times, hold it, pull it to the end. Makes my knot, if you can see it, and clip it. Okay. All right, there's our pillow. You could be done with it right now, but I'm going to do um, something else. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to smooth my pillow by doing a little steam action on it. I'm gonna fill my little iron with water. And I'm going to firmly press from the front front with the steam going okay that just kind of smooths it I want to smooth this side okay there all right now then I wanna make a bow and I wanna put some kind of dimensional thing on my bow because I did that with January, so I wanna do it with February. So let me go get my bow, <clears throat> my ribbon, and the thing that I'm gonna put on here to my dimensional thing, and I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. I have a needle loaded and knotted on the end. I have some ribbon, so I'm gonna make a bow. How I make my bows is I cross the legs and pinch in the center. And I cross the legs until that's the size I want. I, you know, I mess with it until it's the size I want. I don't want it real big. That's perfect. I make sure that both of my, both of the loops are the same size then I come up from the back and I go back to the back I pull it and then I wrap I come up through the center again and I pull 
and then I go back to the back and I'm going to go under the wraps that I did and then go through my lasso twice and, and knot it. Make a knot so then that way I know I won't lose my bow as I mess with it more. Okay, so there we go. There's our bow. Okay, I'm gonna put it on here sideways and then what I'm going to put, these are my Just Another Button Company buttons and I'm going to put, since we have cake on here, I'm gonna put a little cupcake. So I want to sew my button in the middle sideways. And there, my friends, is our pillow all finished up. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you.